Hello friends, it's Sharon from Mad Paper Crush here. And today I'm going to be making these fun little collage fodder mushrooms. Um, I'm gonna be making them with these water br watercolor brush pens that were gifted to me from Hippie Crafter. So we'll be taking a look at what's in this box and then we'll be using them to make these really fun mushrooms that I think would be great in a journal. They could be used for collage. You could use them on your master boards to make different ephemera. I think these would be great um, little additions to tags, or even you could you know, create tuck spots with them or anything like that that you wanted to put in your journal. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at making these fun collage mushrooms. All right, so first let's take a look-see to see what's in this box. Hippie Crafter was generous enough to send me this box of watercolor brush pens, and I'm so excited to use them. Um, so if we, let's just open up the box and see what we got here, whoops. And there is two trays, wow, two trays of pens and a nice little thank you card. That's very nice. And wow, look at all these colors. There's blues and greens. I don't know if you can see the end of the brush. Here, wait, let me just pull one out here. Okay, the end of the brush has the color on it. So that's kind of nice. You can very quickly look at the ends and see what color you have. And it also has a plastic cap, which shows you the color as well. And let me just grab a little scrap of something. And we'll just make a couple of, ooh, sorry about that. Make a couple of quick lines here. And look at that, you can go lightly to go very thin, or if you press a little harder, you can get a very thick stroke. So that is very fun. Let me grab another color and we'll test another one here. Let's see, what do we got? We did kind of a pink here. Let's do maybe a, I don't know, let's try this olive green. I love olive green. So we'll start light and then gets nice and thick. Look at that. And when you press it down, it looks like the brush kind of spreads out but it definitely comes right back together. And this is very um, full of color. They seem, I love them, wow. And then it looks like, so we have all those colors here, two sets of colors, and it looks like, I mean, they're all different, but there's a range of colors. So let me see if I can, I don't know if I can show you this. So you can see here, I'm gonna take them out. It would just be easier if I took them out, Sharon. Just just tell me. Take them out. I know I won't get them all back in the same spot, but that's okay. So I'm pulling out the ones that look similar on their end. But if you look close, let's see. Yeah, wow. So even though they look close, they're definitely different colors. So these two are very close, but if you look at them, they're definitely different. And then what other two? These two were very close, but also different colors. So there's quite a range of shades in here. Actually, maybe these two look more similar, but they're still different. So it looks like there's, there's lots of different colors in here, but all um, different shades too. So that's really fun that you don't, you know, you can just use one pen you don't necessarily have to mix any colors if you don't want to so i think that these still will mix but um i think it's neat that there is such a large range of colors in here so 50 pens and i think that includes these two water pens so these are just your your standard um brush pen that you fill you fill the cartridge here i can get this to come off i don't know how this comes off Maybe I'm, oh, I'm screwing it the wrong way, that's why. Silly, silly. So you put water in here, and then you just have water that comes out of the brush here. 
And so that's nice because then you can use this for blending and things like that as well. And it looks like there's two of those and I think the, let's check if the brushes are similar. Once again, I wonder if I can get this off. There we go. Ooh, that one looks a little thicker. Here, wait. So it looks like you have a thin one, kind of with more of a point, and then a thicker one. I don't know how much difference that'll make, but it looks like you could make more of a point with this one. So maybe do some detailed blending or something. All right. Oops. Get these back together. And then let's start making something with these. Quick before we go, I just wanted to mention, I turned the box over and just wanted to mention the storage instructions, which I think is nice to have um, because I would have thought I would have wanted to keep these um, laying flat um, for some reason, but it says here, storage instructions, Keep the pen caps securely on to prevent them from drying out. Store them away from sunlight. And then it says store pens vertically, tips facing up. So they need to be stored facing up like this. So that's good to know. I, I'm sure I can find like a, a box or a cup or something that these would all fit in nicely um, to be able to use. So that's nice. And the watercolor, there's 50 watercolors and then plus the two pens, the water pens there um, for doing some blending and um, here's just some of their ideas that they have so drawing painting calligraphy I definitely think you could do some um, brush lettering with this uh, with some control there precision controlled and traditional watercolor paint with less mess creates beautiful watercolor effects and is easily blendable when used on watercolor paper and can be used to create a variety of effects including gradients fine to thick lines dry techniques and more so it looks like these are very versatile and do lots of things. Um, let's see what we can do with them. Okay, let's talk a little bit about supplies for this project. So besides our watercolor brush markers, we're gonna be using those for sure to give us all of our wonderful colors. Um, we're also going to be using scissors, a pencil. I uh, pulled out a black and white um, uni ball marker so they're kind of like um ballpoint pens but they're white and black so we'll be using those to make some of our marks and things on our mushrooms so like if you look at this one you can see i've added some lines and some mark making on um, my mushroom there so we'll be using those for that um, we're also going to be using a water brush. Now this um, kit comes with two of these. So I'm going to be using one of those to help us blend and then some paper. So let's talk real quick about paper. I wanted to use book page because I love the way these look with, you know, having some sort of design here in the background. Um, this one has some chemical formulas you can kind of see on there, but I loved the idea of doing these on um, book pages. So they weren't just on, you know, plain paper. But one thing that I did find is you do have to be careful about what kind of paper you use to get the best um, blend for these markers. So, um, you know, these are probably made mostly for watercolor paper and they do very well on there, but I didn't want to do these just on white paper. So what I did was I picked a book um, and just played around with it. And honestly, that's what you're going to need to do because you may not have this exact book and this book is um, called the chemistry of the composite and this is like a, a textbook for a college class um, and the paper is a little bit smooth so and this one's pretty vintage you can kind of see that it has some yellowing around the outside of it which i also loved um, that it was kind of getting old there but the main thing was the texture so a regular um book so like um this one was just a this was a, a sewing book this one feels a lot like it has more texture this one's kind of silky on the top if that makes sense it's a little bit smoother it feels like it's less porous this one you know feels almost just like paper that will probably soak in these colors um, too much. So that's what I was looking for. And my, once again, it might be important for you, because if you can't find this exact book, to just try a couple of different papers first to see what might work. Now, I wanted to show you a couple of other books that I did try and seem to work pretty well as well. So let me go grab those real quick. 
Okay, so here's, I just wanted to show you, I did try a couple of other books and did find that this technique worked on some other books. And just to give you some specific examples in case you wanted to look for these specific books, this um, Tresco England's Island of Flowers. This one also has um, papers in it that are, you know, a little bit um, smooth. Like it almost feels like there's a coating or something on there. But um, this one I liked because it had big words on here, a little bit bigger than the textbook that I was using. So this is what, this is one of the ones that I did with this book. And I thought that was fun. I think it turned out nice and the, the words are very visible, which I liked um, as well. And then I also tried this book, which is Flowering Plants of the World. And this book was introduced to me from my friend Michelle from Tape and Twine. And this book, I mean, it's great, first of all, for cutouts. It has amazing um, plants and different things for you to cut out. But there's also a lot of words in this book. So um, I tried it on, you know, just some of the words because there's a lot of those that, you know, may not get used for anything else. I mean, obviously I'm not gonna, I'm probably gonna use that one as a cutout or whatever, but there's lots of words here that I could use. And this one also feels a little bit slippery. So I tried that one and this is the, uh, is how that one came out. And once again, this one I thought took the colors very well. It's very bright. I did notice that this one, if you did too much blending or got too much water on the paper, it did start to kind of um, warp up a little bit, which is totally fine. You could just, once it's dry, you know, put it under a book or something like that to flatten it out, but just, you know, to let you know. So those were some of the other books that I tried that also worked. So if the first book you um, try or first book page you try doesn't seem to work, grab another one or two or three and just give it a try to see um, if it will work on those other pages. Okay, and the last thing, which I forgot to mention, I just have a little scrap pad here. So as I'm using my water brush, if this gets color on it, I just you know use this to kind of get the color out of the brush so I'm not transferring colors between my um, mushrooms if I don't want to. So I think that's all we're going to need. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I think the most fun thing about this project is that, um, you know, you don't have to be an artist. Mushrooms are unbelievably easy to draw, <laughs> which surprised me because I am not um, a, an artist, a sketch artist, and you know, I'm not, I'm not, not good at those things, but all of these mushrooms that you see, I drew freehand. So, you know, you need a stem and you need a top. And the great thing about mushrooms is that out in the wild, there really are probably every shape, size, and maybe even color, even though these colors don't look, you know, normal, <laughs> they're probably out there somewhere. But um, I loved doing this project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil on one of the pieces of paper that I found seems to work with the paints here, and I'm just going to draw some mushrooms. Um, I'm using my pencil, so, you know, you have to be sure that you're um, writing or sketching dark enough so you can see it. Um, you can always go back and erase it later if you want to, um, but this is kind of, you know, where I started. So Let's just go ahead and do it. So I always do this. I always do the stem first and I just decide what kind of stem I like. And this one, let's say I want to, I want to leave a nice um, big portion for the top of this mushroom, let's say. So I'm going to start the stem down here and I'm just going to make a small, just kind of roundish stem there. So I don't know if you can, you can see that, but very simple just, and it's, there's no right edges, although you could certainly do that if you wanted to. And now I'm going to make um, a fun kind of long skinny top. So I'm just going to start with the bottom of the top of my mushroom. <laughs> so this line is kind of what I want the bottom to look like. And then I'm just going to draw a crazy sort of triangle that's just basically a triangle. And that's pretty much it. Now, the other thing that I was enjoying doing was kind of making the, um, you know, underside visible through some of these. So you could do that, which I did here. You can kind of see, I have just a second line that comes into the stem. So it kind of looks like this is the back portion of the mushroom that goes behind um, the stem of the mushroom. So that's one there. And I might as well go ahead and I'll draw a couple on here. And of course, if you want to keep your um, writing right side up, obviously you want to do them all 
right side up. You could do them sideways. You could do them, you know, however you want it. So let's do this one maybe with, um, I kind of love how this one has kind of a, a stem that, that bends. So maybe let's try and do that, but let's do it. I'm going to do it down here a little bit because I don't want to run into this mushroom, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to, once again, obviously just kind of freehand in this thing, and I'm gonna come up and bend it over to the side. Now it looks like I might not have enough room here. So maybe we could make a little smaller one instead of so long. This one's kind of a, a long stem. Maybe I'll try to make it a little bit smaller. So I'm just gonna come down here and come up the side. Yeah, I think that'll work. So then I'm going to, let's see, I did that one that way. I kind of wanna pull this one around this way, kind of do it the other way. And we'll make this one just kind of a U-shaped instead of a triangle shape. So now I like that one. The only thing is this, one side of my stem, I didn't really like the shape of that. So I'm just gonna come back and finish that off. And then once again, I'll do my little gills here around the other side. So I think that one is pretty cool too. And then um, let's go ahead and do one more and I'll try and do kind of a, a short squatty one. I like those two. So I think I can, I'm gonna make this one with a really pretty wide base around there and then we'll just have it kind of come up and around here and i like i said i just i am just freehanding these and i just i love the way they they end up turning out so i think that'll be perfect there too okay so the next thing we want to do is we want to grab some colors now you can certainly do this any way you want grab as many colors as you want as few colors as you want I found it that I liked it the best when I did about two colors for the top and two colors for the bottom. But you could do, you know, you could pick out three colors and use one of those colors on both the top and the bottom if you wanted to, um, that kind of thing. So let me see. Actually, this one, I think I kind of did, I kind of did that. I just picked two colors and I used it both on the top and the bottom of that mushroom. And then let's see, this one, I think I did the same thing. I actually had a brown and this pink color that I used on the bottom, but then I used the pink color up here with the purple up there. So, um, you know, you can experiment with this certainly and kind of, you know, do whatever you want. So, and I like to do them all differently. So that's just fun for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to look around here to see, I kind of like, I kind of like this green color. And then I'm going to match up some colors with that. So let's see. Ooh, maybe these three I'll do. I kind of like that. Yeah, I think that'll be fun. We'll try that for the first one here. So what I'm going to do for the first one, let's see. Um, once again, you can start either with the top or the bottom. It's up to you. When you're first getting going, maybe you want to start with the, the stem first instead of, you know, the top part if you're not so sure. And let me see if I can zoom in here so you can kind of see this a little bit better on what I'm going to do. Let's see. Okay, I think that's, I think I'm getting all of it in there. Let's see, this is the bottom. Maybe come out just a little bit. Sorry about that. Okay, let's try this. I'm gonna try to keep my paper right here and maybe what I'll do is grab a piece of washi tape so I don't end up moving my paper around on you for this one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for the base is decide what colors I want on the stem. And I think I'm gonna use this one kind of, because it's kind of like a little bit of a brown. And I think I'm gonna use the blue on the base as well. So what I'm gonna do is take one of the one of the colors and I had enjoyed just kind of putting the color on, on a little bit of the base. So kind of half, you know, half of the stem and you can go straight up and down if you want. Or me, I'm kind of doing this little diagonal here. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to fill in the rest with the other color. 
And you can see this is kind of a, a harsh, harsh blend right here. And I don't really want that. Now I can do a little bit of blending with these colors, just like that if I wanted to, which I think that looks pretty cool. But I like softening it even more with this um, watercolor pen. So I'm just gonna come in here and add, actually I'm gonna start up in the blue and try and bring that down so I don't turn it all green. But now you can see I have kind of a softer uh, blend in there. And you can even add some more water if you wanted to, to kind of lighten up some of the different areas in your main color if you wanted to. So the book paper definitely works differently than like a watercolor paper, but um, I like the way that looks. And I'm, I was getting ready to move the paper, so I'm glad I put that down there. <laughs> okay, so now for the top, let's do the top. And I think what I'm going to do is instead of the orange for the top, I'm gonna to use my the green and the blue for the top. Um, so, and once again, you can decide how to, how to do this. In some of these, I just kind of put like the blob of one color and then another color around it. Um, I did kind of the top and the bottom here. This one, I did one color, but I just did a real light portion um, on the inside there. This one's top and bottom. So you can kind of decide what you want to do. So I think let's try, let's do two little spots of the blue. And then we will color in the rest with our green. And I'm only doing down to the top of the mushroom. So I'm leaving the place where like the gills or the spores or the back portion of the mushroom. I'm gonna leave that blank for now. And the other thing is, depending on the kind of paper, you wanna work quickly, not, you know, you don't have to zoom around, but you do wanna work quickly to kind of make sure your paint or your um, color doesn't completely dry. And so now once again, I'm just coming in here and blending those colors together so it's not, doesn't look like quite such a harsh blend there. And I love the way that that kind of just makes it look like there's a little, you know, spot of those without that harsh line around the blue and the, and the green. And then obviously if you want, like it looks like I missed a little bit here, I'm just going to come back in and kind of fill that in. And you could also, if it looks a little too light, come back in and kind of fill things in a little bit so that it's the right darkness, if you would like. And now the last thing I'm going to do, and once again, I tried to move the paper, see that? Um, I'm going to fill in this little gill area or the back part of the mushroom. And I'm just gonna do that with one color to make it a little bit easier. And then this one I think is good for now. So I like the way that turned out. Let's do a couple more. I'm gonna grab some other colors just so we can try a couple of different things. Um, let's see, what colors do I want? I think I want like a darker color, maybe. Let me see here. Hmm, hmm, ooh, I think I like that one. I'm gonna pull that one out, maybe an orange out. I like this one, but I was thinking maybe a little bit lighter might be fun. And then let's do this brown. How about these three colors? I think that'll be fun. Okay, so same thing. And I'm going to, let me zoom out just a little bit to make sure. Well, no, I'm going to stay zoomed in because I think you'll be able to see this one if I do this one as well. All right, so for this one, I'm going to start with my dark color, this dark sort of maroon kind of wine color on the side here, and boy, is that dark. And you can go, once again, fill in as much or as little as you want here. And then I'll do this brown. And I like that this is a little bit lighter brown. And I totally love the way it, the paper shines through there. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of blending with this one. Is 
I love that. And I think while I'm here, I may do the little gill area with the brown as well. And once we start detailing these, we'll be able to um, separate some of those lines out um, when we get there. But um, I love the way that looks. I am going to come in with my white, my water and just add a little this to me, like when it dries, it just seems to add a little bit more texture to it. And I can even like, you can see as I keep adding water, it's sort of lightening up the brown in here. I like that. Okay, so now for the top, um, I'm going to use the other two. I'm gonna use this maroon again, but I'm going to use this one as my um, accent color here. So let's see what I wanna do. I think I'm going to make my maroon one the small piece, but I'm going to just kind of from the edge, make a fun little shape there and then fill the rest of this in. I like that color. That's nice. Okay, and now I'm just going to grab my watercolor, my water brush, and just soften all that up. And it's kind of cool because you can pull it out a little bit further if you want, kind of make it go up and down there. But now it's really looking like it, you know, sort of belongs together on there. Yeah, love it. And I think that's all I'm gonna do for that one. Okay, so now I am gonna move this up a little for the last one. And let me just, I'll double check and be sure that this one is in the camera. Yeah, okay. So the last one, let's see. I'm gonna go crazy and put all these back and we'll try some really different colors. I don't know if I used that one. I'm gonna use a little bit darker blue and maybe even a really dark blue. And then maybe, let's see what we can find here. I think there was like a, ooh, I kind of like that one. This one's kind of a darker brown, but I was looking maybe for like an olive green. I thought that might be fun. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Something like that maybe you know what let's I'm gonna pull four out and we'll see what see what we come up with yeah I kind of like those four for this one okay so here we go let's see for the base I'm going to use my green and brown and I'm just gonna put a little bit of green and actually maybe I'll come all the way up here just on this side and then finish the rest with the brown. And I really like these pens because they, they definitely um, have a lot, they're very concentrated color. And I love that, especially for something like this where I'm not working on watercolor paper and you know this paper I'm sure is sucking up a lot more of the pigment or the color than I would expect. Okay, once again, my very technical blending there. I love that. I think I'm going to make my underside the olive green color here. And then we'll do the top with our blues. And maybe trying to think what I want to do here. Maybe I'll do this one kind of top and bottom this time. And that is a bright blue, but I love it. Okay, and then we'll do, ooh, that's more of a purple, isn't it? I didn't expect that from the color on the end. I 
but I still like it. Okay, so now I'm just trying to make sure I've got my lines around the mushroom straight. <laughs> Not too squirrely. Okay, now I think I'm going to try and come in here with a little bit more water and take out some of the, like the darkness in here. Some of it. There we go. Let's just make sure I have Okay, I like the way that looks too. All right, so now we're going to make sure these are dry before we start the next step. So I'm just gonna let it go. Um, probably it only needs a couple minutes, but depending on the kind of paper you're using, you wanna be sure you're good and dry before we start to detail these things. Okay, these are good and dry. So now let's go ahead and do some decorating here. So I'm pulling out my white and my black pens here. Um, and you can use both of them. You can use one of them. You can just, just use black if you wanted to. Um, and if you don't have these specific pens, I'm sure even a Sharpie marker would work. It might go through. Um, I just like the way these kind of roll on and work um, when I'm doing this kind of um, sketching. So the other thing that I like, the way I like mine to look is... Um, kind of messy. So like when I trace the outline, I like to do it three or four times or whatever, a couple times around the outside so that I kind of have a bunch of lines. So let me go ahead and do one. I'm going to start with this one here. Um, since I'm left-handed, I'm going to work my way across so that I don't, because once again, this might take a minute to dry. So I'm just going to outline the basics and I'm kind of going really fast here and, you know, not holding it not holding my pen real tight, just kind of letting it go. And then I'm gonna make sure I outline my stem here, but I think that's perfect. So um, this is what I'm gonna do around each one of them. And now this one, because I use the same color for like my gill area and my stem, I'm still going to define that with my marker. So, or with my pen, my pen here. So I'm just going to, do the same thing and I'm not real concerned about how perfect it is. I really don't want it to be perfect because I just think it, it looks more fun when it's kind of um, free-handed there. So that's that one and let's go ahead and do this one. Well, I think I only have this in camera. Let me see how much I have in camera. Yeah, I think I only have this these two in camera right now. We'll do that third one in a minute. Um, so now uh, I want to be sure that's dry before I go on because once again, my handle, my handle messed that up. <laughs> but before I go on to add some of the decorations, I just wanted to give you a little sample um, because I'm just going to be making marks on here. That's it. Just making some marks. And so I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of some of the marks that you could, different kinds of marks that you could use to decorate your mushrooms. So circles are great to and you can you know do them small you can do them big you can put them close together far apart you can do kind of an eye shape a teardrop shape um, different types of lines you can do swirls you can do like an arc there and then you can you know take some of these and start to combine them too so crosshatch here I love this one's just like a little squiggle that's always fun just some long dashes, you can do dots, you can make flower shapes, asterisk shapes and waves if you want. And so then I just kind of, you know, was putting some of them together to do different things. So, and if you look at some of the other um, mushrooms that I've done, I've kind of combined those things. So I have some swirls here, some circles there. I have some, if you can see them whoop, here, white asterisks on there. On this one, I have dots and just lines, a little bit of crosshatch there. These I did sort of some oval shapes and just some little scribble scratches there. So this is really um, whatever, you know, you think would look good or the whatever kind of marks you like to make. I, to me, this is kind of the fun part. And then you can use, you know, either one, your 
your black or your white. You could even get different colored markers out to do this. I think that would be fun too. Um, so I'm gonna start with this white marker. And I think in my blue areas here, I'm just gonna add just a little bit of polka dotting. Not too much. And let's do a little here, a couple there. And this is, wasn't quite dry. It's, I, my hand was sticking to a little bit, so I'm gonna need to be careful. Um, and then I'm going to do some more. So for my gills here, I'm just gonna make some marks. And this just kind of helps distinguish it from the rest of the mushroom as well, I think. And then maybe we'll just do a little fast cross hatch there. And maybe we'll repeat that up here. And that might be good enough. That might be perfect. All right, let's do this one. I think I'll maybe I'll start with the um, this one, the black pen for that, this one. So let's see, for the gills, Let's uh, see, what do I wanna do there? Maybe I'm just gonna do real little kind of tight circles in there. Sometimes the hardest part is doing, you know, this little <laughs> bit of decorating, which is, I think is so much fun. Um, and then let's do some, let's do some more dots, but we'll do them all the way up and around here. I kind of like that, maybe over on this side too. And then, let's see, I'm gonna do some, just some dashes here. And I try not to make it look real regular, but sometimes it ends up that way, I don't know. And then I'm gonna do some of those same thing. I do like to repeat some of the marks that I'm making in other parts. I don't know, I just think it makes it a little bit cohesive. And then let's see, that might be enough there too. I don't know, maybe I'll just do a couple little. Asterisks here. Kind of add a little bit of something to that. And we'll do that there too. There, I think that's perfect. So now let me move this up a little and we'll do the last one together so until those dry. Let me make sure I have this in camera. Okay. I don't have that quite straight. That's right. All right, same thing. Um, you could outline these in white, but I like the black better just because it really shows up. So once again, I'm getting my Get my messy hand going. And you can go around as many times as you know you like, whatever works for you there. And this one, um, just like the one we did before, because it has some darker colors, the white shows up a little bit more and I, I like that. So I think what I'm going to do is across kind of this line that's here, I'm just gonna make those little kind of scribbles right along that edge, that sort of blended edge there. And then let's do maybe just some ovals. And for, you know, whatever reason, I think that odd numbers look better. And then I really like um, the crosshatch look. So I think I'm gonna do a little bit more of that down here, but I'm gonna sort of do a curved crosshatch. So I'm gonna make some curved lines first, and then I'll come in and just, you kinda, I wanna go fast with this marker or this pen, but it doesn't always, doesn't always work that way. All right, and then for this one, I think I'm going to add, let's see, Decisions, decisions. Maybe I'll add some swirls for my backgrounds here. Try and go different ways. That's fun. And I can't be done here. I've got to add some more 
dots. <laughs> and maybe I'll add some little scribbles just to these couple of these little things just to add some color. All right, I think we are done. Well, we're not done. Okay, the coloring portion is done <laughs> and the marking portion is done. So once again, you wanna be sure these are dry. So I'm gonna start with this one. Actually, I'm just gonna kind of cut this one out so I don't end up smudging this other one while it kind of dries. So I'm gonna put that one over here just to dry a little bit. And then I'm gonna cut this out. Now, this is just your normal everyday fussy cut, but because I did these on book pages, I find that I like to, to leave a little bit of a border of that book page on there. And then of course, when you're adding this to a journal um, or some ephemera, you could always you know, distress it. If you wanna cut it right down to the, um, the line, you can. But because I sort of use that messy technique, I think leaving a little bit of a border is nice. Plus it also kind of really shows you that, you know, this is a book page that I was working on there. So that is one done. And look at that. Isn't that great? I love the way that looks. All right, and that one might still be a little bit wet. We're gonna let that one go. I'm gonna do this one. And I think the, I love the way they look when they're cut out. I mean, they definitely look fun on the page when they're all together there. But they really start to pop when you cut them out. Ugh, I love that one. These colors are, those are really fun. Although I like those too. All right, last one. I think we're dry now. Looks a little bit shiny. I might just need to be careful on some of these scribbles that I did on the last part. Let's do this last one. And I do like the way that this one looks, you know, kind of bent over. I am definitely not perfect with these, but I, that's why I like them so much is because they're still relatively easy to do and they turn out so great. So there we go. These are all done. And then the last piece, um, which I'm not going to do yet, but if you still, now when I try to do my lines, I do try to kind of go over the pencil so that it's not showing and I don't have to worry about it. But like on this one, I can still see some of the pencil there. So now when you go to erase your pencil, you really, really want to be sure they're good and dry. So I'm not going to do the rest of these yet because I want to be sure they're very dry. So I might even wait until tomorrow to do if I want to erase any of the lines on here. But this one, because it's just the border and um, I don't have like, you know, a lot of the scribbles and things, I think I can probably come in and erase some of this. But it these will, you know, it will definitely smudge if you try to erase them before um, before they're good and dry. So, and some of these, because of the words and stuff on the on the book pages, I sometimes didn't even notice the pencil was there. So if you look at it and you don't notice it, don't worry about it. You don't need to come in and um, erase it if you don't want to. But if you just, you know, um, and like in this one, I, I'm noticing there were, I had drawn a couple of pencil lines because I, you know, wasn't exactly um, liking the shape you know, of different things. I think that's why I came in with more than one pencil line. So I am noticing them a little bit more, but like I said, you just come back in and, and erase them and that looks perfect. I'm not going to do these now, but I do see a little bit of pencil line that I might want to come in um, on this side. Actually on this side, I don't see too much. So I might just, you know, leave that go, but I want to be real careful. I don't want to smudge it. So there I go. I said I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to, I did it. I, I'm going to put it down. <laughs> All right, there you have it, friends. Some fun collage 
mushrooms to add to a journal or book. And if you want more information about Hippie Crafter and the watercolor pens that I used in this video, you can check out the description box down below and I will link them for you down there. So thank you so much for watching, friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're not subscribed to my channel, I hope that you'll hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.